Good morning. This is Busy again, and this is an update of my ongoing work with Watson machines. As you can see from my last video, I have added an extra alternator on top, so there's actually two alternators, one below with the uh, trigger wheel on there that triggers the switch, and then this one here adds additional current to my whole system. I have uh, also after a lot of experimentation have uh, decided that this is the uh, capacitors that I'm using both for the alternate alternator capacitor as well as the switching alternator it's a SPL 2 farad 24 uh, DC volt capacitor the reason I went to this one it, the uh, the capacitance is enough to carry the current I need from the alternator all the way to the motor. Now what I'm going to show you today is the improved uh, speed that I'm getting on my alternator. If you remember last time on my last video when I was running just the alternator into the motor there was a 507 revolutions per minute decrease in the alternator as soon as I engaged the motor in using my switch the last time there was only a 277 decrease in RPMs when I went from the alternator through the switch and into the motor. This time I'm going to show you some improvements that I've made and show you the results of that and um, afterwards then we'll I'll show you exactly what I did. So um, to explain what these are this is the voltage coming out of the alternator capacitor this is the voltage in the switching capacitor and this is the amperage into the motor and then again just like last time I will show you the uh, the speed of the alternator bef before I engage the switch after I engage the switch as well as showing you the speed of the motor once it's all turning so here we go gets up to 20.4 okay that's 725 RPMs we're going to let the alternator balance out RPMs, so it's actually a little bit less than a hundred RPM decrease in revolutions. And as you can see as well, we're getting almost around 80 to 90 percent voltage conversion from the alternator capacitor to the switching capacitor. And we're getting 2100 RPMs off of the motor. you um, one of the some of the improvements I made on this this right here are is, is the schematic that I've been using uh, these are the diodes coming off of the alternator this is the switching or the alternator capacitor right here you really can't see it but th behind these meters is the is the uh, switching capacitor and then behind the motor here are my flyback diodes now what I've done is traditionally a flyback flyby flyback diode would go from one side of the motor to the other but the one thing I discovered in the course of my experiments is that simply charging the alternator or sorry, simply charging the capacitor off the alternator will actually slow down the alternator um, so that when this capacitor back here um, makes contact through the switch with this other capacitor, drains this capacitor, and then this capacitor has to slow down again, or charge again, which means that the alternator is actually slowing down. So what I've done here is I've routed the flyback capacitor back into this capacitor here. 
In so doing, this is keeping this the switching capacitor charged a lot more uh, thoroughly, which means that that alternator capacitor has to do a lot less work and gets drained a lot less, which means there's a lot less drag on the alternator. Um, now, there, obviously, we can't get away from that speed loss and charge the alternator. I do, however, have uh, one other thing I'd like to show everybody. Now, you saw that the speed here was around 2100 RPMs. One other way which I can do to reduce the drag on the alternator is to actually use a motor control and reduce this speed, and thereby reducing the speed, the current needed to... Uh, to uh, run it. Um, I'm going to make a slight adjustment back here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the motor again and show you a larger decrease in the alternator reduction. However, it will be at the cost of speed on the motor. So just a moment and I will we'll start this again. Thanks.